Genesis 32. And, on his way, Jacob came face to face with the angels of God. And when he saw them, he said, This is the army of God, so he gave that place the name of Manaheim. Now, Jacob sent servants before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, and he gave them orders to say these words to Esau, your servant, Jacob says, Till now I have been living with Laban, and I have oxen, and asses, and flocks, and men servants, and women servants, and I have sent to give my Lord news of these things, so that I may have grace in his eyes. When the servants came back, they said, We have seen your brother, Esau, and he is coming out to you, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was in great fear, and trouble of mind, and he put all the people, and the flocks, and the herds, and the camels, into two groups, and said, If Esau, meeting one group, makes an attack on them, the others will get away safely. Then Jacob said, O God of my father, Abraham, the God of my father, Isaac, the Lord, who said to me, Go back to your country, and your family, and I will be good to you, I am less than nothing, in comparison with all your mercies, and your faith to me, your servant, for with only my stick in my hand, I went across Jordan, and now I have become two armies. Be my saviour, from the hand of Esau, my brother, for my fear is that, he will make an attack on me, putting to death, mother and child. And you said, Truly, I will be good to you, and make your seed like the sand of the sea, which may not be numbered. Then he put up his tent there for the night, and from among his goods, he took, as an offering for his brother, Esau, two hundred she-goats, and twenty he-goats, two hundred females, and twenty males, from the sheep, thirty camels with their young ones, forty cows, ten oxen, twenty asses, and ten young asses. These, he gave to his servants, every herd by itself, and he said to his servants, Go on before me, and let there be a space between one herd, and another. And he gave orders to the first, saying, When my brother, Esau, comes to you, and says, Whose servant are you, and where are you going, and whose are these herds? Then say to him, These are your servant, Jacob's, they are an offering for my lord, for Esau, and he, himself, is coming after us. And he gave the same orders to the second, and the third, and to all those who were with the herds, saying, This is what you are to say to Esau, when you see him, and you are to say further, Jacob, your servant, is coming after us. For he said to himself, I will take away his wrath, by the offering which I have sent on, and then I will come before him, it may be that I will have grace, in his eyes. So, the servants with the offerings went on in front, and he, himself, took his rest that night, in the tents with his people. And in the night, he got up, and taking with him his two wives, and the two servant women, and his eleven children, he went over the river, Jabbok. He took them, and sent them over the stream, with all he had. Then Jacob was by himself, and a man was fighting with him till dawn. But when the man saw that he was not able to overcome Jacob, he gave him a blow in the hollow part, of his leg, so that his leg was damaged. And he said to him, Let me go now, for the dawn is near. But, Jacob said, I will not let you go till you have given me your blessing. Then he said, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For in your fight with God, and with men, you have overcome. Then Jacob said, What is your name? And he said, What is my name to you? Then, he gave him a blessing. And Jacob gave that place the name of Peniel, saying, I have seen God, face to face, and still I am living. And, while he was going past Peniel, the sun came up. And, he went with unequal steps, because of his damaged leg. For this reason, the children of Israel, even today, never take that muscle in the hollow of the leg, as food, because the hollow of Jacob's leg was touched.
Genesis 33. Then Jacob, lifting up his eyes, saw Esau coming, with his four hundred men. So he made a division of the children between Leah and Rachel, and the two women servants. He put the servants, and their children, in front, Leah and her children, after them, and Rachel and Joseph at the back. And he himself, going before them, went down on his face to the earth seven times, till he came near his brother. Then Esau came running up to him, and holding him in his arms, gave him a kiss. And, the two of them were overcome, with weeping. Then, Esau, lifting up his eyes, saw the women, and the children, and said, Who are these with you? And he said, The children, whom God, in his mercy, has given to your servant. Then, the servants, and their children, came near, and went down on their faces. And Leah came near, with her children, and then, Joseph and Rachel, and they did the same. And he said, What were all those herds, which I saw on the way? And Jacob said, They were an offering, so that I might have grace in my Lord's eyes. But Esau said, I have enough, keep what is yours, my brother, for yourself. And Jacob said, Not so. But, if I have grace in your eyes, take them as a sign of my love, for I have seen your face, as one may see the face of God, and you have been pleased with me. Take my offering then, with my blessing, for God has been very good to me, and I have enough. So, at his strong request, he took it. And he said, Let us go on our journey together, and I will go in front. But Jacob said, My Lord may see that the children are only small, and there are young ones in my flocks, and herds, one day's overdriving, will be the destruction of all the flock. Do, my Lord, go on before your servant. I will come on slowly, at the rate at which the cattle, and the children are able to go till I come to my lord at Seir. And Esau said, Then, keep some of my men with you. And he said, What need is there for that, if my lord is pleased with me? So Esau, turning back that day, went on his way to Seir. And Jacob, went on to Succoth, where he made a house for himself, and put up tents for his cattle, for this reason, the place was named Succoth. So Jacob came safely from Paddan Aram, to the town of Shechem, in the land of Canaan, and put up his tents near the town. And, for a hundred bits of money, he got from the children of Hamor, the builder of Shechem, the field, in which he had put up his tents. And there, he put up an altar, naming it El, the God of Israel. Genesis 34. Now, Dinah, 
the daughter whom Leah had by Jacob, went out to see the women of that country. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, who was the chief of that land, saw her, he took her by force, and had connection with her. Then his heart went out in love, to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he said comforting words to her. And Shechem said to Hamor, his father, Get me, this girl, for my wife. Now, Jacob had word of what Shechem had done to his daughter, but his sons were in the fields with the cattle, and Jacob said nothing, till they came. Then Hamor, the father of Shechem, came out to have a talk with Jacob. Now the sons of Jacob came in from the fields, when they had news of it, and they were wounded, and very angry, because of the shame he had done in Israel, by having connection with Jacob's daughter, and they said, Such a thing is not to be done. But Hamor said to them, Shechem, my son, is full of desire for your daughter, will you then give her to him, for a wife? And let our two peoples be joined together, give your daughters to us, and take our daughters for yourselves. Go on living with us, and the country will be open to you, to trade, and get property there. And Shechem said to her father, and her brothers, If you will give ear to my request, whatever you say I will give to you. However great you make the bride price, and payment, I will give it, only let me have the girl for my wife. But, the sons of Jacob gave a false answer to Shechem, and Hamor, his father, because of what had been done to Dinah, their sister. And they said, It is not possible for us to give our sister, to one who is without circumcision, for that would be a cause of shame to us, but, on this condition only, will we come to an agreement with you, if every male among you, becomes like us, and undergoes circumcision, then, we will give our daughters to you, and take your daughters to us, and go on living with you as one people. But, if you will not undergo circumcision, as we say, then we will take our daughter, and go. And their words were pleasing to Hamor, and his son, Shechem. And without loss of time, the young man did as they said, because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was the noblest of his father's house. Then, Hamor, and Shechem, his son, went to the meeting place of their town, and said to the men of the town, It is the desire of these men, to be at peace with us, let them then go on living in this country, and doing trade here, for the country is wide open before them, let us take their daughters as wives, and let us give them our daughters. But these men will make an agreement with us, to go on living with us, and to become one people, only, on the condition, that every male among us undergo circumcision, as they have done. Then, will not their cattle, and their goods, and all their beasts, be ours? So let us come to an agreement with them, so that they may go on living with us. Then all the men of the town gave ear to the words of Hamor, and Shechem, his son, and every male in the town underwent circumcision. But, on the third day after, before the wounds were well, two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon, and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords, and came into the town by surprise, and put all the males to death. And Hamor, and his son, they put to death with the sword, and they took Dinah from Shechem's house, and went away. And the sons of Jacob came on them, when they were wounded, and made waste the town, because of what had been done to their sister, they took their flocks, and their herds, and their asses, and everything in their town, and in their fields, and, all their wealth, and all their little ones, and their wives, everything in their houses they took, and made them waste. And Jacob said to Simeon, and Levi, You have made trouble for me, and given me a bad name among the people of this country, among the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and, because we are small in number, they will come together against me, and make war on me, and, it will be the end of me, and all my people. But they said, Were we to let him make use of our sister, as a loose woman?
Genesis 35. And, God said to Jacob, Go up now to Bethel, and make your living place there, and put up an altar there, to the God, who came to you when you were in flight from your brother, Esau. Then Jacob said to all his people, Put away the strange gods, which are among you, and make yourselves clean, and put on a change of clothing, and let us go up to Bethel, and there, I will make an altar to God, who gave me an answer in the day of my trouble, and was with me, wherever I went. Then, they gave to Jacob all the strange gods which they had, and the rings which were in their ears, and Jacob, put them away, under the holy tree at Shechem. So they went on their journey, and the fear of God, was on the towns round about, so that they made no attack on the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz, in the land of Canaan, which is the same as Bethel, he, and all his people. And there, he made an altar, naming the place El Bethel, because, it was there he had the vision of God, when he was in flight from his brother. And Deborah, the servant who had taken care of Rebekah from her birth, came to her end, and was put to rest near Bethel, under the holy tree, and they gave it the name of Alan Bekath. Now, when Jacob was on his way from Paddan Aram, God came to him again, and, blessing him, said, Jacob is your name, but it will be so no longer, from now, your name will be Israel, so, he was named Israel. And God said to him, I am God, the ruler of all, be ye fertile, and have increase, a nation, truly a group of nations, will come from you, and kings will be your offspring, and the land which I gave to Abraham, and Isaac, I will give to you, and to your seed after you, I will give the land. Then God went up from him in the place where he had been talking with him. And Jacob put up a pillar in the place where he had been talking with God, and put a drink offering on it, and oil. And he gave to the place where God had been talking with him, the name of Bethel. So they went on from Bethel, and while they were still some distance from Ephrat, the pains of birth came on Rachel, and she had a hard time. And when her pain was very great, the woman who was helping her said, Have no fear, for now you will have another son. And in the hour, when her life went from her, for death came to her, she gave the child the name Benoni, but, his father gave him the name of Benjamin. So, Rachel came to her end, and was put to rest on the road to Ephrat, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob put up a pillar on her resting place, which is named, the pillar of the resting place of Rachel, to this day. And, Israel went journeying on, and put up his tents on the other side of the tower of the flock. Now, while they were living in that country, Reuben had connection with Bilhah, his father's servant woman, and, Israel had news of it. Now, Jacob had twelve sons, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's first son, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's servant, Dan and Naphtali, the sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant, Gad and Asher, these are the sons, whom Jacob had in Paddan Aram. And Jacob came to his father, Isaac, at Mamre, at Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, where Abraham, and Isaac had been living. And, Isaac was a hundred and eighty years old. Then, Isaac came to his end, and was put to rest with his father's people, an old man after a long life, and Jacob and Esau, his sons, put him in his last resting place.